Hello Children of the Cloister Club in Exeter Cathedral. I'm recording this video for you because I miss you and it's a real shame that we can't be together at the moment. I'm recording it from my sitting room at home where I'm in lockdown with my husband Piers and my daughters Lydia and Ava and I'm glad to say we're all okay. My husband Piers has got hay fever so sometimes you might hear a sneeze in the background. He has very very loud sneezes and I had a slight accident in the garden where I was doing some gardening and hit a bramble. So if you can see there I have a mark on my forehead. So my daughters are now calling me Harry because they think I've got a mark on my forehead like Harry Potter. But apart from that we're all okay and I hope you are too. As I said, we miss you. And so this is a little present from Exeter Cathedral for you all. I'm going to record a short video and we'll be reading a story and then I'm going to suggest an activity that you might like to do afterwards. The story is one of my favourite stories from the Bible. It's about some of Jesus' disciples after Easter, after the first Easter. They'd been told by their friends who'd gone to Jesus's tomb, that they couldn't find Jesus's body, that he'd disappeared. And this is a story of what happened next. That same day, two of Jesus's friends were going to a town named Emmaus. This town is about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking about everything that had happened. And while they were discussing these things, Jesus himself came near to them and began walking with them. They weren't able to recognise him. Then he said, what are these things you were talking about while you walk? The two followers stopped. Their faces were very sad. One of them, who was called Cleopas, said, well, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened there. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about? The followers said, well, it's about Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was a prophet from God. He said and did many powerful things. Our leaders and the leading priests gave him up to be judged and killed. They nailed him to a cross and he died. But we were hoping that he would free the Jews. It's now three days since this happened. And today, some women of our friends told us some amazing things. Early this morning, they went to the tomb, but they did not find Jesus's body there. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels. The angel said that Jesus was alive. So some of us went to the tomb too. They found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, you are foolish and slow to realise what is true. You should believe everything the prophet said. They said that the Christ, Jesus, must suffer these things before he enters his glory. Then Jesus began to explain to them everything that had been written about himself in the Bible. He started with Moses and then he talked about what the prophets had said about him. They came to the town of Emmaus. It was getting dark and I imagine it might look a little bit like the town that I've got in the picture behind me. Jesus acted as if he didn't plan to stop there. He carried on walking. But the two pegged him, saying, stay with us. It's late. It's almost night. Can you see the moon in the sky there? So Jesus went in to stay with them. Jesus sat down with them and took some bread. He gave thanks for the food and he broke it. And then he gave it to them. And then they recognised who Jesus was. But when they saw who he was, he suddenly disappeared. And they said to each other, 
amazed. When Jesus talked to us on the road, it felt like a fire burning within us. It was exciting when he explained the true meaning of the scriptures. This is one of my favourite Bible stories, perhaps the favourite of my Bible stories. Why is that, I wonder? Well, it's partly because it's a story about people who are confused and anxious. People who don't quite understand what's going on. And that's something that all of us feel at one time or other. And I think that's what a lot of people are feeling like right now. The way one of my friends has of describing this is to say that he's discombobulated. He's discombobulated. This is a word that we sometimes use to say that we're confused or puzzled. We're disappointed. All the plans we had to do this, that and the other have got thrown up in the air and nothing is like what we expected. We're discombobulated. Jesus' disciples in this story were all of those things. They'd had high hopes for Jesus. They thought he'd come to save them. But he died. This was a terrible disappointment and a sadness to them. And even more puzzlingly, Jesus' body had disappeared when people went to the tomb. The second reason why this is one of my favourite stories is that it shows us that even when we're feeling confused and disappointment, d disappointed and in need of comfort, Jesus meets us where we are. Jesus came to find the disciples on their journey to Emmaus. He walks alongside them in the story. He listens to them first and tries to understand how they're feeling. And then he explains to them what th the way things really are. And after that, as we heard, he comes and eats with them. These are really ordinary things. Jesus' friends were very ordinary people and he relates to them in really ordinary ways. But then an extraordinary thing happens. As he sits and eats with them and takes the bread and gives thanks for it and breaks it so they can share it between each other, the disciples realise that Jesus is with them all along. We believe that Jesus is with us still, even when we are confused, even when we're discombobulated. And that is a real comfort to me. So now for the activity. I want you to use your imagination and I want you to look around you wherever you are. For many centuries, people have been inspired by this story and have used their imaginations to think about what it must have been like for Jesus to have met those disciples. So I'm going to try and show you one of these pictures here. So this is a famous picture by a man called Caravaggio. And you can see he's imagined Jesus there with his arms wide open, blessing the bread. But also what he's done is to imagine the disciples, not as they would have been dressed in Jesus's day, but wearing the clothes of the painter's own times. And look what he's got on the table there. He's got a real roast chicken dinner and wine for the disciples to drink and fruit in a basket there. It's the kind of ordinary dinner table that this painter would have known from his own day. So I want you to imagine what it would have been like if Jesus came to eat in your house today. Remember, Jesus liked coming to eat with ordinary people just like you and me in ordinary places. So if Jesus came to your house, what would he see and what would he eat? I'd like you to draw a picture of what it would be like and perhaps we can share those pictures with each other afterwards. Or you can write a story if that's what you would rather do.
thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye for now.